So Thomas, you had this uh, interview with Alexander, 27 years old guy, about Avatar, the film. Yeah. And it made you think about the difference between the social experience of film viewing and the intimate experience of it. Could you tell us yes. how it went? Yes, I was really happy that, that one of these uh, interviewees, they, they picked Avatar because I'm always interested in, in this kind huge success and, and he, he chose to, to take that as, as his film. And it was really interesting because he watched this film together with, with the three of his friends and uh, all four of them were, were students at the, at the film school back in Sweden. Um, and they went, they watched it and the three other guys, they dismissed this film as a crappy Pocahontas ripoff. They just thought it was silly, but he himself was really deeply moved by it. And he, so, but he didn't dare to, to tell them because he felt, felt embarrassed in front of his cool friends. So that's an interesting, uh, it's a social situation where, where he didn't dare to, to share his deep um, feelings of, for the film together with them. But in our talk, it was really interesting because uh, uh, that was an example of, of, of a film that actually helped a young person to, to express and articulate some really deep spiritual, philosophical uh, dimensions in life. Uh, he was not raised uh, in a Christian family. He was not into uh, new age, uh, new religious uh, philosophy or something like that. But he was completely taken about in, in to the film's description of it's a fantasy world in Avatar, but, but the, the, the people in Avatar, they can relate and communicate directly with the animals and, and mm -hmm. through the, some kind of a mm -hmm. connection with, through hair, hair and, and ear or something like that. And uh, you also have this, the, the, the tree of life and the, the life force called Ewa. So he was uh, talking about this uh, and, and he, he was struggling with his own words. Um, well, you know, there is some kind of a, a, a biological deity. Uh, he used that kind of, of words so, and I, oh, the, so he's... Uh, inspired by, by uh, New Age spiritism or like, no, no, no. but it was not like that. He was trying to, to create his own wording for this. But what was the, the question for him was the detachment that he felt as a human being detached from the rest of the world, from the rest of, of the nature, animals and things like that. So he had this deep longing to overcome this detachment, which is a human, a condition for human being. And the film helped him to, to, and gave him a language for that struggle that he had. Uh, so he was talking about the, the film and also sometimes in his real life, he mentioned, for example, that, that he was out with his friends in the, in the Swedish forest, um, creating a, a trans dance situation where, where you were dancing all night long. And in that situation, he could sense sometimes the feeling that uh, every, everyone, everybody, all the, the surroundings with trees and nature, the, the borders between people and, and nature dissolved. So he felt this, well, I have felt this in, in real life. I'm longing for this transcendence. But here, and he didn't use the transcendent word, but he, in, in Avatar, he, he talks about detachment and, and overcoming the, the ego. Everyone is enclosed in, in his own ego. So he was struggling with that. And Avatar as a film helped him think and feel about that, that dilemma. So the engagement he had during the film helped him to put words or concept yes. on something that he felt but he wasn't able to phrase in a way to, is it something common or is it something that we can say, is it something that can, film can bring? Sometimes, yeah. so, so sometimes I have other examples of, of, of that when, uh, uh, because uh, I had the, this, 
hypothesis that, that films only confirm that, that things that are going on in your real life. But sometimes I see that, that, that films and stories and movies, they're actually helping people to address issues that are closed to other circumstances. You are not talking with your family or your friends or something like that, but the films are giving you stuff, food for thought. And that is quite unique that, that films has, stories has, has that capacity actually to, to help people. It's not only a confirmation of what is, only, what is already going on, it's something new. Mm. Um, because, in, sorry, because in that case, it was, the film allowed him to talk about something he was even not able to talk with his own friends. Exactly. So it's very intimate to a it's, point that it's yes. surprising. Yeah. And he didn't want to share his thought with his friends. And that's, so he wanted to keep it for himself and then when we talked, he had the poss possibility, because I, I was a neutral researcher, uh, he, he didn't have to care about me in the rest of his life. So, so, but together with me, he could explain what he was thinking. But that example is, is you, you, I, I could see this, that people had strong experiences which they didn't want to discuss with friends and families. That was really a, a, a surprise. A finding which was quite general. People watched films and he, in his case he had watched this film 30 times. And in several cases people are watching the films privately. So, and that gives a, a, new, uh, a new dimension to film. Filmmaking was in, in for the former years, in the, I mean, 30, 50 years ago, it was a, a social event. You went to the cinema and you watched films and you talked about it. Now I see examples of, of people enjoying films and they are consuming films privately at home, in bed or something like that, because the, the devices are so easily, so you, you can really re-watch, watch and re-watch and you do it alone. Privately, privately uh, alone, protecting the, the, the sensitive issues that actually are, are uh, affecting you, uh, engaging you. You don't want to have others, other views into these uh, sensitive matters. Sometimes when you go to the movies with friends after the film, some of your friends, they want to talk about it, they want to share their view, but some of them, they don't want to talk about it because maybe it's too intimate and they can say, they cannot say the truth or they don't allow themselves to say the truth about what they feel. Something I like agree. that. I, and, and I have felt that quite a lot. I think the situation is also quite difficult. You come from a darkened cinema uh, and you are in a special mood and then when you, you go out to a pub or a cafe or something like that, you're drinking coffee and, and it's, it's, so you're, it's quite difficult to get back into the magical universe of, of, of the story when, when you have left the story. It needs methods to, to go back, mm. to, to really focus on going back to the story. It's, it's difficult. Maybe it means that the emotional experience of the film cannot be replaced by words afterwards. With words afterwards, with the friend, you only talk maybe about superficial that's, that's my experience. Yeah, but but I, I've also experienced the, the, other, the other situation where you, when you really set up a talk about a film, when, when you invite, pe invite people to, to analyze and, and, and discuss films, then it works. You have to take the people back over the threshold into the story again. And, and in a research conversation, I was, I was that threshold. I, I talked to them and, and let him and, and others talk concentrated in a focused way about their film viewing. And then we got into the depth of, of the experience. It's very strong and it's very important because maybe it says that as a screenwriter, you have to think that you're talking to a lot of people, hopingly, like talking to a lot of people with your subject, with a lot of things, but in your mind, you talk to one person very deeply and very intimately and with about something that this person maybe cannot talk about in other contexts than the film experience itself. Yes, I think so that, that, is, that, is, true. that do, is true. Do you think that it makes the film experience much more, what is the word, not religious, but spiritual and sacred in a way that what is considered 
in the culture, for example? I think it's a, I think it's a very important resource that that you could enter into filmmaking, uh, film film storytelling. It is an important resource, and I can see, for example, when I look at statistics, twenty percent of the Swedish population is uh, they are watching a movie every night. I mean, every night. Uh, on the, the, the commercial channels, channels or, or DVD or, or whatnot, uh, downloaded films, 20% are, are watching a film. And I have this um, a quote from one uh, young woman. She, she, uses, she watches a film every night as a bedtime, uh, night, bedtime uh, story to, to, to calm down and, and console her, herself before she goes to sleep. So people use films for example, for that reason, to, to meditate and, and to just relax. Uh, so we are really consumers of film in a big, uh, huge, huge consumers for meaningful purposes. That's my take. I mean, yes. people d don't do things just... It's not like any product. It's no. not just for any need. It's for very deep and very meaningful deep needs. needs. Yes. Yeah. So the Avatar experience is, is, is quite fantastic that this commercial, I was happy that this very commercial, one of the greatest successes in the world, yes. to have an example of, okay, this commercial film, which could be criticized for several reasons, but for some young adults, it gives them the possibility to talk about really deep aspects which they are they, they have not access maybe to, to traditional religious language or, 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 or other groups that, that dwell on these aspects. But the film does it. It was a surprise for me when uh, I, I talked to Philip. He was 22. And his film, the, the most important film that he picked was Apocalypse Now from 1979, which I watched 1979 when I was 19. Mm -hmm. I thought the film was since long forgotten. But when he was uh, 14 years old, some years back, he, he, he saw the film uh, in a video store. Wow, an American mo uh, war movie. I, I watch it. it, it will be fun. But then when he watched the film, it was like, a, he, 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 he says it was like a religious experience. He was completely taken in by it because it showed him that film could be something else than, than just uh, action movies. And he, he, tell me, he tells me that that film is his personal medicine. A strong word. That's a strong word. And I asked him, what, a medicine for what? Um, and he was, uh, now he was uh, studying at the university, sociology. And he was uh, fighting with an ambivalent view on life uh, between morality and brutality. And I asked him, why, why, is, why is that important for you? And then he told me that he has had this experience of when he was uh, 13, 14, um, in school. He was bullied by, by nasty pupils. And the teachers were, were uh, coming into the situation and, and tried to talk to the class that they shouldn't bully each other. So the, the pupil, his friends, so-called friends, they were behaving in front of the teacher. But when the teachers were gone, they still behaved a little bit. And suddenly everything shifted and they, bang, they, they became violent and, and uh, arrogant and aggressive. And he suffered very much about for that. And then back to normal. So this abnormal, normal, immoral, moral situation was, was something imprinted in him as, as a 13-year-old and 14-year-old. And in this scene, he sees the same in the scene, the shift between morality and arbitrary random violence. He recognizes his own conflict in a way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that, that is interesting, the, the jump, the creative jump he makes from the American Vietnam War movie and how he, it fuels his own experience of, of classroom bullying fuels the, the screen and the, the, the story 
through his own personal experience. And what did he say? Or did he say something about the, how the film changed him or changed how he felt his own conflict? Did he say something about yes, that? Yes, yes. When we talked with each other, he, he expressed that he has a cynical view on life. The, the, the human being are, we are humanistic very, on a very shallow level. And it's just a, a surface. If you scratch on the surface, the beast comes mm. forth. Mm -hmm. So he had also this kind of cynical distance, uh, Nietzsche idea of how life is. So he was developing his own life view, mm -hmm. which was towards a Nietzsche Übermensch idea that the strong person is actually the one who, who set the rules and you can use violence and nobody will stop you. And struggling with also what happens with, with the victims. So he, he hadn't really um, made up his mind. So he, but he used the film, he had watched this 25 times. And every time he got into this, the medicine of some kind, watching, feeling, contemplating during the film, this philosophical, sociological uh, dilemma that he was struggling with 22 years old. How is the world? Is it a benevolent world or is it the world for, for, for strong people taking advantage, using violence? Mm. So he did not solve his conflict, but he find a way with the film to handle it, to, to live with it in a way. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So were you surprised by, the, by this kind of profoundness of the experience? Yes, of... I, yes I was. Mm. And also that it was very important for him on a private, deeply personal way for example, he, he, he was a part of a group of, of, of young uh, students having a film club at, at the university. And every month they, they watched films and they, they proposed films. And I asked him if he had proposed Apocalypse Now for the film club. No, 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 no. I wouldn't Too do intimate. That. Too intimate. Too no, private. No, no. He, he, Too absolute, personal. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And that is also, many, many voices tell me that, that they protect the, the, the deepest experience of, of films, they don't want to share to, to everyone. So they protect it from, from insight from, from others, families or friends. And that is really in interesting. A new, this is very, very new interesting. Of, of yeah. using, consuming films deeply for yourself, extremely focused on your private issues, not sharing it. So, so films. Are, uh, and cinema and uh, films uh, cons consumption is, is moving from a social event to a private event. It seems that it's a key remark because maybe now in the culture we underestimate the level of intimacy that cinema film can reach and the power that they have. And, and this is what you, what you just told us shows that there's a really big difference between what you say with your friends, with your social network, yes. about the film, cinema films, and what you feel, really, and how important they can be Absolutely. to your life, to your personal life. Absolutely. So that's a great lesson. Absolutely. And the, the films, they, they, they are sincere experiences. I think that is interesting because we, we are in a social world where, where we play with each other, we are making jokes, funny, and sarcasm, but sometimes we are dealing with sincere things and film viewing allows us to deal with the deep stuff without irony, without sarcasm. Sometimes it, it's sarcasm in, in the movie, but, but sometimes it's really the thing, as in Apocalypse Now.